All right, ladies and gentlemen, I got a quick video for you today. I'm going to show you how to clean the carburetor and a Honda Cologne motor. This happens to be a Harbor Freight Predator motor. But uh, let me get you all set up right here on the redneck tripod and we'll get started. All right, there we go. You all are on an air compressor right now because I'm too broke to afford a tripod. All right, we're going to start with most of these engines are exactly the same Honda, Predator, whatever else the other ones are. Uh, most of them have this new emission stuff, so be sure to remove this hose off the vent on the gas tank. And there's another one behind this plastic here that goes to the valve cover. You can either remove it by hand or when you pull this off, it'll come off with it. Two 10 millimeter bolts here. Make sure your fuel is straight ahead and your choke is straight ahead or else it won't come off without damaging. So I got my wrench here. Pop this off. I'll do it in real time just to show y'all. It's super easy, super quick, you know. Even if you're not mechanically inclined, this shouldn't take you more than a half hour. Most of the carburetor is really bad and then, you know, it's 25 bucks for another one. All right, we're going to pull this straight off, see how this hose came loose. Maybe you can see it right here. This goes on the valve cover. Here's your carburetor. You want to be careful because you have a little gasket here. You want to put that to the side somewhere safe. This little arm here on the choke does come off, so put that somewhere safe. The carburetor is now loose. You can take off this little spring here. Just lay that to the side. You can remove this here little metal rod that goes to the governor. It just comes off like that. The only thing holding it back now is the fuel line, which when you remove this, this valve may be off, but the contents of the fuel tank will still end up on the floor. If it's been sitting a good long time, it might be a good thing to drain all that old nasty gas out. But in the case of this machine, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to shove a screwdriver in there to limit the flow. So let me grab that real quick. Alright, got me a pair of angle pliers here. I'm going to loose this little, uh, get this out of the way first. Loose this little clamp up here. A little spring clamp that holds the gas line in place. I'm going to lift this up, twisting it gently as I go. I'm about to get to where the fuel is going to start spilling out, so I'm going to pinch this line as I'm going up. Now it's loose. See if it let go. Fuel runs out. Shake. It's just a regular old screwdriver. Shove it in there. There we go. No fuel spill. Now, carburetor is ready to remove. You need to be careful because there's another gasket just like this, but it's made of paper. Sometimes it sticks to the back here. You want to make sure it just stays here so it doesn't get tore up. Because you can reuse it if you don't tear it up. Now we have our carburetor in our hand. And let's move to the bench. Alright, welcome to the cinder block because YouTube won't pay me for my stuff. Here we have the carburetor. It's very simple. Um, I can do a video one time. I'll explain how these work pretty much. As the fuel run, I mean the air runs through, it draws a vacuum in the bowl, sucks the fuel up. What happens with these when they set up, or if they get in a dirty environment, they build up trash in the bottom of this bowl and it gums up the jet. So air goes in this side, this is your choke here. These are your air passages for the idle. These are 10 millimeter bolts here. You have, this is your drain bolt. If it was still on the machine, you can pop that off, let the old fuel run out. This one loosens the actual bowl and lets it fall off. Or you can do is just turn it upside down, let the old fuel run out on the floor. That's why wood floors are good, people. Mm. Just make sure you do the shake afterwards. All right, got our carburetor here. Got our 10 millimeter right here. Pop loose. There's a little gasket on here. You don't want to lose that or this thing's going to leak. You can already see here on this bolt a little bit. See the schmoo on there? It's varnish. It's nasty. Here's yonder bowl. 
see there's another gasket here you don't want to lose that or damage it it will leak so here's the bowl so we got some varnish and there's a little bit of what looks like sand down in the bottom of it Mr. O'Reilly the carb clean will deal with that much better at least a little bit better it blew the sand out let's see here's some pieces of it here on the finger focus focus see the little grit alright now we have the carburetor in our hand with no bowl she's undressed here's our float this activates where the fuel comes in notice it's closed now no fuel is coming out let her down see it dripping that's what's left is coming out of this right in here straight in there is your jet you can't see it because of the lighting in here but we're going to take a flathead screwdriver shove it in here and very gently try and pop this loose if you were to change the jet this would be the same process so say if you were upgrading the jet for in the case of a go-kart more power or whatever this is your main jet here this one happens to be a number 77 you can't really see through there yeah you can see through it see how there's a hole sometimes they get plugged up right there with sand or whatever this jet's clean so we have nothing to do with it next thing we're going to do is look up that there port can't really see light through it, so I'm going to blow some carburetor through there and see if that comes out the back side. See if we can line the hole up. As you can see, it's pouring out through here. So this part is clear. Now we're going to move on to this port. Blow those out. Now in this case, this carburetor is not bad. It's just it runs funny sometimes. And there's the fuel coming out the back side. Do the same with this one. Fuel coming out the back side again, and that's it. The carburetor has now been redneck cleaned. In the case of this, see, there's not that much varnish on here. It just had a little bit of trash in the bottom. It may have sucked some up or something. Um, other things you can do, say if you're not receiving fuel, like if it will start, run for a minute, then shut off. A few minutes later, you'll be able to start it again, run for a minute. This little needle valve here will be cl clogged up. So it's simple enough. You pull this pen out. Set that to the side. Don't lose it. Pull this out. That's your needle valve right there on the end here. This little rubber thing. Make sure this isn't all gummed up or sticking. Blow this out real good. Blow this out real good with the valve open. Make sure you blow all the junk out. Close her back up. Put her back together. Put the pin back in. You want that pin to be in there center ways. You know, it doesn't really matter. You can check the function of this. You take some carburetor cleaner. Gently try and fill this little thing up. Turn the valve on. And when I release my finger, it should drip. Well, maybe I didn't put enough in there. Let's see. See how it's coming out the bottom there? That's how you know it's letting fuel by now. If this thing, if you keep having a problem with the carburetor overflowing and it's not leaking from any of these points, it's your little needle valve here. You'll have to replace it because the rubber in it's going hard. All right, now we're going to go back together like we've cleaned everything. Screw the needle all the way, or the jet, all the way back down. Snug. It, you don't need to kill it. Just make sure it's snug because it can come loose with the engine vibration. We're going to take away, which way does the carburetor sit on the engine? This is the front. Put your little thing facing this way. That way, say if you need to drain it in the future to winterize it, that's easy to get to. And make sure our little gaskets are still in place. Screw that back on nice and tight. <clears throat> Click. Now we're going to go put it back on the machine. Alright, we're back over here at the device being powered by this carburetor. 
We're going to reassemble it back in the opposite order that we disassembled it. So, line. We have our little felt gasket here. We didn't disturb it, so it's okay. We're going to line the bolt holes up with this carburetor. I'm going to get the fuel line ready to go because that's the easiest thing to deal with first. So I'm going to pinch it ahead of the stopper here. Gently remove it. Line it up with the carburetor inlet. Push it down on there. Now I'm going to move my little spring clamp here so that we don't have any leaks. Alright, fuel lines hooked back up. Remember to turn this to that position so that you can put the hose back, I mean the cover back on. Now with this you need to be careful. This is your throttle butterfly. It connects to this rod. When you install it, make sure it goes all the way down and activates. Because if you don't, it'll idle, but it will not throttle up. Sometimes it won't even idle. Make sure you put your little spring back or you're going to have a very hesitant deceleration. So, saying you let off the throttle, it'll take, it'll hang up, it won't decelerate quickly. Now we're going to push this all the way back. Make sure everybody's not binding. I'm going to put our next gasket, which you notice on the carburetor right here. See the little hole? There's a little raised spot in the gasket. Line those up. little arm for the choke goes right back here. Make sure it works like it's supposed to, facing this direction. Now we're going to get our air box right here. Make sure there's no trash in the bottom here so it doesn't suck it back into the carburetor. You just spent so much time cleaning. We're going to line the holes up on that. Both holes, preferably. As you're doing so, you can feel the hose. You can't necessarily see it for the valve cover. Thread that back on there, just give it a little wiggle. Push this all the way flat. Put the little breather hose for the fuel tank back on. Get your two little nuts that hold everything on here. Hand tighten these, like literally, use your hands. Because this plastic stuff torques and bends super easy. So hand tighten, they're as far as they can move with my finger. Push this wiggle it, finagle it. Try and spin a couple more turns. Because it's super easy for this thing to be slightly cattywampus. Tighten these down with a wrench and there's an air gap and it will not run right. So now I'm going to get my torque wrench, aka P wrench. I'm going to quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn until these are tight. So that was a little bit less, a little bit less. I'm going to wiggle it one more time. Eighth of a turn. Eighth of a turn. That's it. That's all it needs. It's plastic. You'll break it. Now all that's done. Fuel on. Let her sit there and chooch a minute. If you did anything wrong, it'll let you know right now. It'll start dripping on the floor. But I'm so confident I did everything right. I'm going to pick my tools up. By now, it should be dripping on the floor if there's a problem. Obviously, there isn't. Coke is already in the on position. And it works. So, hope you all enjoyed the video. Comment, like, subscribe. Please subscribe so YouTube will pay me for this. And uh, hopefully this was helpful. If you have any questions, comment down below. I'll do my best to answer them. If you want to see anything else, like a complex diagram of how a carburetor actually works, or how to rebuild a carburetor on something like this. Uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. I've done it in the past. I have other videos rebuilding four-wheeler carburetors and lawnmowers. So, have a nice day.